technique is um, the very core of the creative process. Every artist um, at some point has to face the fact that they must develop a technique. Simply means, what is your relationship between the pieces of equipment and the elements that you use and how do you interact with them? What is your mental approach and how do you get the materials to cooperate with you? I mean, let's face it, paint is simply grease. Oh, excuse me, the paint that I use is simply grease. I am an oil painter. I have done a few watercolors. I have stayed away absolutely from acrylics. Now you might say, why don't you like acrylics? Well, pardon me, all you acrylic painters, but they seem like plastic to me. So, I don't use acrylics. I use oil, and oil is essentially just grease with some pigment added to it. So, you are going to take this grease, and this is my palette. It's not very pretty. As you will see, it's a mess, and it's on a dinner plate, which isn't very romantic. It somehow doesn't um, seem to carry the same um, sophistication that a palette where you stick your thumb through the hole. But I use a white china dinner plate and I arrange my colors in such a way, something like the color wheel, and then end up with the neutral colors. And so here I have this grease and I am going to have a piece of canvas, which can be really scary if you don't have a clue what you're going to do with it. And that has happened to me many times. So all you beginning artists, don't worry if you feel afraid of a piece of canvas. It's a common problem with artists. In order to cause the pay to behave as I would like for it to behave, I use turpentine. I don't use linseed oil because I live in a country that has oftentimes 80 to 100% humidity. And anything that has a lot of oil, like linseed oil, will grow a nice garden of all kinds of fungus and mildew, which of course is not a good thing on my canvases. So I use turpentine and that tends to discourage the growth of any items such as mildew and fungus. I would say that my techniques are rather common to oil painters with the exception, perhaps, of extreme buildup that I have used in some of my paintings. And if you would go through my gallery, you would see several examples of paintings where I have built the canvas, excuse me, the paint up sometimes as much as an inch or maybe even more away from the canvas. Artists or uh, people always ask me, or often ask me, what is your technique? How do you do that? That process has developed over time. And I have learned to push it and push it more and more. I would say the basis of that technique, which I simply call impasto or buildup, would be this product made by Grumbacher which is basically called an MG underpainting white or a quick drying white. Now quick doesn't mean immediate or instantaneous. It means quick compared to conventional oils, 
which can take days to dry, and which, by the way, is why a lot of people don't like oils, in addition to the fact some people think they are smelly. I happen to love the smell of turpentine, so it's all how you interpret it. it. But this product, made by Grumbacher, is the one that I use. And the reason I like this is because as it dries, it changes its potential for usefulness for me. When it comes straight out of the tube, it's a little bit thicker than toothpaste. And I oftentimes just squeeze a big mound of it on my palate. And then I will take this little piece of equipment called a palate knife and spread it around. Spread it like peanut butter on a piece of bread. And then as I progress through my painting, depending on what I have already imagined in my mind, I want this to look like. Let's say, for instance, I'm going to paint foliage. Or, well, in one case, I painted a bird's beak, but that's a whole different technique. If I was painting foliage, I might actually let, and I have done this, all of this paint that's on this palette is going to get dry. And I will let it dry and then scrape it off with the palette knife and then make it into pieces of something that looks like fungus, something that looks like a leaf, and then stick it onto the canvas. That's one technique. Or I may take this paint that I have smeared around like peanut butter and while it's almost the same consistency as toothpaste, I pick it up with my palette knife and glob it onto the painting and hoping that I can then manipulate that around to achieve the effect I'm trying to get, such as tree bark or various other um, textures that I want to imitate. So this product, as it dries, then you can roll it just like you did in kindergarten and you can make all manner of things out of it. You can use it here. I have some long things that look like worms. I even did a worm on one of my paintings out of this paint. And as it dries, it changes its viscosity or its consistency. And you can work with it. I can patiently roll this out to something very, very thin to where it's almost like a string and it makes very nice vines or bird's nests or various other treatments that I might want to use it for. It has to be pretty dry to do this so it doesn't stick to my fingers, but you can see I'm molding it something like clay. And as I put it on the canvas then, after it's dried, now you notice this is white. I will then use a turpentine wash and wash over it and I can color it any color I want. And what's more, when I am finished, I can take a wonderful product called oil pastel. Now this particular one happens to be white, but I have a full set. This is made by the Chenelier Company and it comes in many colors. And me being the gluttonous person I am for color, I have to have one of every color. And so it comes in a beautiful box and they're all laid out there and it's a wonderful experience. After this paint 
this Grumbacher Quick Dry has dried on the canvas and after you have already washed it with whatever color you choose to, with which to wash it, you can then take your oil pastels and go over it and do some amazingly beautiful highlights, pick up the tones and change the whole personality and character of the painting. So we have different, different um, products here. Turpentine, uh, plain old greasy oil paint. We have the Grumbacher quick drying white paint. We have oil pastels and oh, I forgot to mention my favorite. Well, of course, almost every artist has brushes. And by the way, I'm very particular about my brushes. I will spend a whole lot of money on a good brush. Maybe as much as 40 US dollars for this kind of a brush. Because the brush is the one tool that can be the boss. I get to be the boss of everything else, but the brush is the boss. And if I don't treat them nicely, which I don't, I'm sorry, I, I'm really rough on my brushes, but if I treat the brush nice, it will treat me nice. And it will do what I ask it to do. But brushes are very important. But there's one piece of equipment that is one of my favorites. The lowly paper towel. And what in the world? This actually looks pretty nasty, doesn't it? but I save them. You know why? I think right now you are going, what? Well, yes, because when it gets a little saturated with turpentine and it dries, when the turpentine is dry, then I can wad it up and it has a little stiffness to it. A fresh paper towel is okay for some things, but the better paper towel is the one that is stiff with turpentine and then dried. And then I can make a soup down here in my palette, a soup. Um, and I can take my paper towel and I can swish it down in the soup and I can bring it up and put it on my painting. And oh, the amazing things I can do with that. You can make beautiful foliage. You can make all kinds of wonderful, um, uh, I guess I would say textures. It depends on what you are trying to do. But I use a paper towel a lot. And I save the wet paper towels that have turpentine in them and I use them in my painting. That, I think, is some of the secrets of how I do some of the techniques that I achieve in some of my build-up paintings. The other technique is simply glazing, and that one is a commonly known technique among artists, not one that takes a lot of explanation.